Okay guys, so after some of the stuff I've gone into recently, quite a few people have asked me questions on the topics we're talking about because they're not quite sure, but they really want to get a better understanding of what we're discussing. So I'm going to go through blood work basics today and I'm going to try and keep this video under 10 minutes, but it's very, it's a very long topic that I'm trying to condense down as short as possible to make this video watchable, but it's important information. So I'll try not to waffle. Let's go. Blood tests, pathology work, blood work, getting bloods done. All these things are the terms for the same thing, of literally getting a blood test to see your internal health. These are things you often wouldn't feel until you're in a really, really bad position with. But you can see on a blood test so far in advance and you can fix whatever would happen before you have an event like a stroke, a heart attack, kidney failure, liver failure, all these things that we see are very, very common these days. So let's try and explain what each category is, what you'd be looking for, and sort of what we gonna, what we do in life that affects it in the fastest possible. Red blood cell count, <laughs> we've got quite a few values there. If your red blood cells are elevated, it's not usually a good thing. Cyclists try and do this because it helps give them more oxygen around the blood, around the body when they're cycling and things like that. We see in the Tour de France, that's usually one of the things they get caught with, raised red blood cell counts. We've learned that in school, I'm sure in PE. We also see that with a lot of performance enhancing drugs. Not all performance enhancing drugs are steroids, but there are a lot of drugs that push, push red blood cell count up for whatever reason. Some people intentional, some people not. And then a lot of people, when it's unintentional, are trying to then give blood to bring this down. But as me and Victor discussed, telemasartan is a great drug to do that. It helps bring it down, keep it under control. And for the general population, it can also be, still be something that happens. Again, those high blood pressure medications are lifesavers. It shouldn't be in, you get put on them after heart attack. It should be that you're fighting for them when you're 30 years old because you're seeing that this stuff's already starting to go in a bad direction. White blood cell count. Often in, in medicine, they'll just see that as something to do with infection. However, in the steroid realm, having testosterone up really quick often causes an immune response driving your white blood cells up. So if you're gonna drive your dosages up, as I discussed in the TRT video, you start at a TRT and you slowly build up from there. Just like starting a diet, you don't go from 5,000 calories down to 1,000 with two hours of cardio a day. You'd go down just enough to make progress. So think of it on the way up, same thing. Go up enough to make progress. You don't, if, if this is holding, maintaining, you don't go to here, do you? Go to, go to there, and that's gonna see progress and then work up. And that avoids that immune response. We can also just see an immune response generally. If, if you're, you're, your white blood cell counts might kick up, if your body's just overstressed, you just hammered it for too long, too high dosages, best thing to do, bring dosages down. But that won't be the only thing to be isolated. You'd see a lot of this damage in the same process. Clotting status next. We, we normally have a platelet count in there, which is one of the most important things, especially in relation to the high blood cell. So if you've got high platelets and high blood cells, then not only is there a lot of cells in your blood running round, but then they're clogging together a lot more because you've got a lot of platelets which hold the blood together. That's things to stop you bleeding, as we all know. So we need to be very careful that we don't have these elevated at the same time. Now, if you have a heart attack, you'll probably, these will be the things that will probably caused it. Some of the drugs you would put on what will be things to bring the blood cell count down, bring your blood pressure down, bring your heart rate down, and bring your platelet count down. So it's something that we obviously need to monitor. Having one or two things elevated is a problem. Having all these things elevated is a big problem. So it just, it just raises the risk a bit more. Kidney and liver damage. If it, what, what don't we do that destroys these two these days? Pretty much everything that people do with their normal uh, modern lives just absolutely batter your liver and kidneys, which is why we see kidney transplants and liver failure all the time. <coughs> One of the worst ones is not actually steroids, it's fucking drinking. <laughs> Getting black. Well, what are people doing? Uh, it's now Sunday, and I'm sure most people were on lockdown. Saturday night, you all got bladdered last night. So <laughs> the worst thing in terms of steroids that stresses this is orals and trembolone. If you don't take them, probably not putting your liver under that much stress. But then if you drink all the time, you're gonna kick the shit out of it. <laughs> we know that. that that's, we've got so much evidence from alcoholics, for example. We know that. Your poor diet and lifestyle will destroy these as well. Dehydration, put stress on your kidneys. Also then, uh, high blood pressure, put stress on your, your uh, kidneys and your heart. 
So this is when we start to see things overlapping a lot more. If you're dehydrated when you get your blood test done, your kidney values could be skewed. If you're training really hard, both could have some skewed values just a little bit. It's not then cause for concern, but it would be something to monitor because then if it's the first blood test you've got, you've now got your start point. What is it next time? If it continues to go in the wrong direction and they're going further out of range, then you need to go and get it monitored and looked at more deeply. If not, it's likely it's just because you trained hard, things like that, and you'll see it fluctuate. Cholesterol was the main topic of the video on YouTube with Victor. And then obviously, for keeping it as basic as possible, HDL's good, <laughs> LDL's bad. That's not just, it's not as simple as that at all. But for this, this situation, yes, it is. Uh, so that was what we're saying. My HDL's dropped quite a lot. So we need to bring it up. And my LDL has risen up. Things that can do that. Steroid usage in general, usually crash your HDL. Oral steroids especially will probably crash your HDL. There's drugs we can use to try and bring that back up. There's supplements we can use. And there's uh, some certain lifestyle changes we can do. One of them being whatever you're doing that's putting it in that bad position in the first place, stop. So whether it's drugs, drink, smoking, steroids, stop. At least have a break for a while and correct this. If you're talking to people using steroids especially, if you're gonna then skew a lot of these values, which often happens if you blast with mega dosages, if you don't set those recovery periods then and fix these, your recovery period is dictated by fixing this and then leaving it fixed for a bit. You don't just wait six weeks and then go back. Because I guarantee you, if most of you have damaged this quite badly, in six weeks, it will still not be back. And then you're going back on and it's not in a position to do so. And all you can do is compound it further into the ground. Which is why we said in that video, the guys who were having the worst heart problems and the, and the arterial plaque buildup were the longer users, they've been using it for a longer time because they kept not repairing this stress. Stress then became damage. So that's why it was important to, to, to me, for me to talk about it. Because at the moment, man, is just a little bit of stress. Things have got skewed, but they've only been for such a short time. It's only just happened, okay? Well, it can be reversed very quick. The longer it's there, the harder it is. C-reactive protein is a marker of inflammation. So if you're inflamed with all this stuff bad, way worse. Do you know when you see someone drop like 10 pounds in a week because they're on a diet? They were inflamed to shit. Because if you're eating a highly processed diet full of foods that don't digest very well, you drink, you smoke, you don't exercise, you generally live a very poor lifestyle, you get in the lift and you went, <gasps> when you're just standing there. Like your body is struggling, it is inflamed. So this is a marker that we want as low as possible. Mine actually is pretty low, so that's, that's actually good. When then we see some of the other stuff, my red blood cell counts are in a really good position, my C-reactive protein is in a really good position. So, okay, this then changes the picture from something we need to work on to if these are all bad, we go, fuck, you're gonna die. <laughs> so it then changes the status of it. Creatine kinase is a marker of muscular damage. So if you train hard, it's very unlikely to be in range. It's probably gonna be a few times over. If it is, it's probably not something to worry about, but still monitor it and monitor the other symptoms. Things like if your urine's always really dark, that is an issue, especially if this is high. It's an issue in general. I mean, your kidney's probably under stress as well, you're dehydrated, but if then this is high and you've got really dark urine, you may be suffering some, some actual problems. So then again, check the TGP and get referred to a specialist, we know. Hormones, big long list of hormones. I'm just gonna go for the main ones. So we have the signaling hormones, SH and LH, uh, same in men and women. Then the signals to produce are sex hormones, mean sex hormones, testosterone, estrogen. We need to understand that these hormones are important for both sexes, not just for women or just for men. Estrogen is not a woman's hormone, testosterone is not a man's hormone. We just have different levels that our bodies require. So if women have too much testosterone, bad. If guys have too much estrogen, bad. Men are gonna start grow growing breast tissue with too high estrogen if it's really, really high. But if it's really, really low for both of us, we feel terrible. Joints suffer, sex drive will go, your mood will go. So it's actually really important, the hormone, for our bodies to function right. And that's why the hormone status, which the doctors often don't check for, is one of the most important ones because these dictate our personality, our sex drive, our joint health. Estrogen actually has a huge effect on cholesterol. They have a, a huge effect on mental health. As we said, a lot of people suffering different depression and not depressed, they're hormonally deficient and that can be fixed. 
with medications if we know that that's the problem, but doctors aren't doing this as a first port of call when you're going in with depression and they should be doing, or if you've got erectile dysfunction or something like that. Yes, obviously there's m multiple reasons that could happen, but it's like the hormones are a bit off. This could be destroying someone's life because the hormones are just not in the right place. When some people say that I can't lose weight, well, I had an underactive thyroid. I generally really struggled to lose weight, but that's again treated with a tablet every day. When we got the blood test to see that, oh yeah, you actually got a problem there. It's, it's our range, it's really low. No wonder you're feeling exhausted all the time. So, I mean, that could be a, another video on its own. So keep it brief there. Also, uh, testosterone being too high as a woman will start turning you into a man. It's how people have sex changes. So some of the girls who are doing bodybuilding actually take so much testosterone that they eventually do that to themselves by accident because they're not realizing that they're taking too much. If you think that going to the gym is gonna make you look masculine because you've seen pictures of those girls, it won't. So guys, hopefully that's helped give you a little bit more information. I, I try to keep it brief, but I can't really go any more brief than that. So if you've got any questions on how to get blood tests done, what to look for, how to try and battle your GP over this sort of stuff and get the help you need, just drop me some questions. I'll be more than happy to respond in DMs, questions below the, the videos or anything else.